It's, um, you know, it's where we're going to go today, you'll program. probably say, boy, this is hot. We're not going to go up in the hills, right? But where we go hike, the hills are like this, and they're just straight up and straight down, and it's loose rock and snakes and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, people come down there at night, and they slip and fall, and they're dead because the coyote leaves them. And they wander around the desert for three or four days, and if they're lucky, they come on a road that somebody travels, and they get they go to the home. They have no other choice. They can't go any further. So, so all you need is to bring an ankle out there, and you're finished. Good. So, you want to go out and wander around and see what we can see out there? Yes. Okay. What's happened is the places that are easy to cross, we have built a fence, and we have lots of water. Control. So we push the people uh, west, which is the dangerous part of the desert. And so now they're crossing in that really dangerous area of the desert. And you know, and we can't, you know, there's no fence there because it's, I don't think it's possible to build one. But they go up over these terrible mountains and stuff. And, you know, I think it's a, the problem can only be fixed by the government. It can't be fixed by the Border Patrol and it can't be fixed by the Mexican people. It can't be fixed by anybody except the government. do that, but the, the migrants that I've talked to said they do it because they think somebody else can use the shirt. I mean, they don't want to take a bold jacket like that and be seen out in public with it, so they leave it here for somebody else who comes along. And they, they get in here and they, they sort of weave themselves into these places, well, I mean, you know, and they do it like leave. maybe six will be here and six will be somewhere else, you know, further down, so if one group gets caught, they don't all get caught. And because I wouldn't climb in those bushes for anyone. They catch. What happens is they get a group of 20 people, and a helicopter spots them. And then the helicopter, mostly they hide. So the helicopter then, they claim they don't do this anymore, but I've seen them do it. And they come down on top of where they think the migrants are, and then they rock the helicopter and power up the blades. So they start like a tornado down on their, on their knees. And pretty soon somebody runs, and then once one person runs, they all, and then they got them. But they only, their goal is, according to the head of the Border Patrol, is 80% of the people that were in that group. So if there's 20 people, that means four people are left wandering in the desert, and the coyote always gets arrested, because he wants to get arrested. He wants to go home, because he, he's lost all the people. Of course, he doesn't want to know he's a coyote. So, <laughs> so uh, then when they get, you know, so now you have four people wandering around the desert, and they don't know where they are, they don't know where north is, they don't know where anything is, you know. And the first people we ever met had two little babies about this big and one in arms. And, and they were tramping through the desert for four days and we said, well, where are you going? And they said, we're going to, uh, to uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis. And I said, you know where Minneapolis is? And they said, well, the coyote told us it's those lights that we can see up there. So and they tell them whatever they need to tell them to get them to cross the border. And then they, if they have to leave them, they leave. If somebody twists their ankle, they have no hope. They don't. There's no way they're going to stay with them. So mm -hmm. it's a tough, cruel place, you know.